it does not overcome the second law of thermodynamics. This textbook shows the kids a fossil starfish. And it says, boys and girls, 3.4 billion years old, the remains of the early ancestors of modern human beings. Was your great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandpa a starfish? I bet he could pick oranges like crazy. All right, now please do not laugh at this next picture. This will be a picture of my brother when he first wakes up in the morning after his first cup of coffee, which apparently was a little too strong. Uh, by the way, kids, we have to warn this next generation. Listen carefully. Kids, do not drink coffee. Because if you drink coffee when you're young, when you get married, your babies will be born naked and illiterate. <laughs> don't drink that stuff. Okay. This will be my brother on the left. Now, here he is right there. Please don't laugh. Right there. Notice what the textbook says. Boys and girls, 30 million years ago. Kids, let me translate that for you. Anytime a textbook says millions of years ago, what it really means is long ago and far away. It means a fairy tale is coming next. That's your warning, fairy tale coming up. It says 30 million years ago, these critters evolved. Oh, there's that word again. You got to watch that one. Remember, it's got six different meanings. Be careful about that word. It says they're ancestral to both humans and modern apes. Ancestors to humans? Grandpa? <laughs> what big eyes you have, Grandpa. <laughs> ah, the better to see you with, my boy. You know, we've been teaching kids are nothing but an animal, and today, a lot of them act like animals. A lot of folks can't figure it out. Barbara Reynolds figured it out. She's a journalist. She said, your kids go ape in school? Here's why. He's being taught evolution. Guess what, Johnny? You're an animal and share a common heritage with earthworms. Uh, you mean I'm just an animal? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't even know what kind that one is. That's a porcupine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, let me ask you a question. If evolution is true, how do we tell right from wrong? How do you tell right from wrong? If we were going to make a list of things to discuss, abortion, premarital sex, extramarital sex, theft, uh, murder, pick, a, pick any topic, any moral issue, and before you decide what's right and wrong, you have to decide how you decide. Do you decide right and wrong based upon majority opinion? Do you decide right and wrong based upon what Congress thinks is right or wrong? Is there an absolute standard someplace? How do we tell right from wrong? Or does that change every generation with every new leader we get? Where's the standard? Have you noticed the rock music these days is so full of death and blood and destruction? Well, the Bible says all they that hate me love death. How do you tell right from wrong? If evolution is true, there is no way to tell. One professor I debated said, there are no absolutes. I said, really? Are you absolutely sure? <laughs> ah, well, wait a minute. How can I be absolutely sure there's no absolutes? Yes, there are absolutes, folks. Thus saith the Lord. That's absolute. And the Lord said, Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh, nor print any marks upon you. Some people apparently don't know, or they don't care, what God's Word says. How'd you like to marry that? Whatever it is. Now, well, the problem in America today, and in the world today, is we've lost our standard. We have no way of determining right from wrong. Get a bunch of carpenters together to build a building, but nobody can have the same ruler. Everybody gets a ruler that has a different standard. <coughs> to one guy, this is an inch. To the next guy, this is an inch. How's your building going to come out? Good luck. You have to have standards. We have a National Bureau of Standards to protect the standard meter, you know, the standard kilogram, the standard pound. You have to have standards. The problem is, in our morals in America, we no longer have any standards. We've thrown out the Bible and said, oh, well, if it feels good, do it. Well, look what you're going to get in your schools. We could spend hours talking about the loss of standards. We get into more of that on uh, videotape number five uh, about the uh, effects of this evolution teaching.